how to market Web3 for broader audiences and young generations. My name is Marina and I'm the CEO of LKI Consultant, a Web3 marketing and design agency. Today we're going to be talking on opening Web3 to, first of all, uh, mass adoption and second, a uh, younger audience. Today I have um, many great panelists who are joining me today and I'd like to invite them all on stage. Uh, Alexander Bilov, who is a co-founder of Coins Telegram Fund. Round of applause, please, for all the panelists. <laughs> Anna Kimison, who is a VP of Cillionaire. Paulina Papaloka, who is a branding strategist, as well as the founder of Awaken Space Education. And last but not least is our new panelist, Alex, who I'd like for him to introduce on his own. Hi all, I'm Alex, I'm from Let's Exchange, it's a service that allows users to swap crypto hassle-free. Alex is getting it. Alex is getting the best type of uh, introductions, uh, you know, as in crypto. Everything is always happening last minute. So why don't we kick off this panel by talking about Web3 as a playground for the tech-savvy and crypto natives. Uh, all of you are experienced individuals who made their way into the Web3. So for all of you, what was the one strategy that really helped you break a barrier for the younger uh, generation and the mass audience making it more accessible for all. And let's start from uh, the right side, from Paulina. Okay, hi everyone. So the number one strategy, I want to see if others agree, is to educate the generation, the young generation, through content. But you need to do the type of content that this generation responds to. Do we have any Gen Z in the room? up to 24, 25 years old? No? <laughs> Millennials? Millennials, raise your hands. Okay, so we're talking about the young generation. So these youngsters, now the Gen Z, they're different than the um, Millennials. And they want content that is gamified, that is fun, that is extreme, that is super authentic. The Millennials are more polished, they wanna they, they uh, have this idea that they want to have a work-life balance, a beautiful lifestyle. Everyone wants to create this lifestyle and everyone wants to look perfect and amazing on Instagram, but uh, Gen Z is very different. And they're more raw, they're more authentic, they're more messy in their content, so you need to create that type of content to educate them, engage them, and that's the best way. Think Mr. Beast, think their influencers, these are their best friends. They watch them for hours on YouTube and on TikTok. So you um, educate them in this way, and then uh, they're in. They're ready to buy if they have money, of course, and then if they don't, they go to their parents, uh, which is the uh, Gen uh, X, my generation, which you need to target as well. <laughs> so that's my idea. I think that's a great point. With education, we can cover a big gap in terms of awareness. And I think in crypto, awareness is something that everyone, regardless of the project that you're currently running, working on, because people just don't get many things. So I think it's a great strategy. Let's move on. Hi, all. My name is Alex. I'm sorry for using sunglasses right now, but we had a great party yesterday, and I feel that light is so aggressive right now. Yeah, so I would introduce myself a bit, uh, because um, I started in crypto in 2017, and uh, I think I'm quite experienced in uh, investments in crypto field and in marketing, especially as soon as we are on media side of this business. Also, no, we not just invest, we also do uh, media, we have a cryptocurrency news outlet which is int integrated in Binance app right now and you can check our crypto news over there. And um, we are doing a lot of media stuff uh, for different crypto companies uh, including Binance, Tron, Cardano, Polygonmatic, OneInch and even uh, Sandbox which is widely recognized play to earn game. And considering the um, question, uh, speaking about uh, how, how to get the younger audience. It's really important to be creative, like the previous spe speaker said, but it's also very important to integrate them, like um, it should be maybe gamified. 
we see the success of this uh, play to earn games like X Infinity, and uh, there are hundreds of them. Many of them are very, very um, successful. And um, I remember when uh, I attended the um, event in Paris, it, is, was, uh, it was an Ethereum conference, and uh, Vitalik Buterin said that the most important thing in crypto adoption worldwide is play to earn, and it is the main driver to bring younger audience, which is going to conquer the world really soon. So yeah, I think that would be the answer. I love the gamification part. I think the attention span of the younger audience is so, so little. So uh, projects just really need to get creative and trying to get that uh, attention span to get longer. Thank you for sharing that. So my name is Anna Kimison, and I'm the vice president of Cilinear. We are um, uh, currently the fastest growing web free media company at the market, and we are um, trying to educate the mass and especially also the younger generation on the web free topics and providing crypto news daily. And I think like a very important topic is also community building because younger people, they're always looking for like um, a group of people to belong to and um, especially a big part I think of the web free can also be like NFTs because it's very easy to see like for example what happened with um, very famous projects like the Board Ape Yacht Club, for example, how fast they've been able to create a growing community around themselves and a very successful one. So um, I would say there where the energy goes, there the attention goes, and attention is the new currency. So uh, we see it happening often that um, younger people also like look up to other people. So I think it's very important also to work like with many KOLs in the space and um, yeah, follow up the trends like already my colleague says. Um, for example, to adapt to trends, like especially TikTok, this a rising platform right now. And I think even we paid like maybe too late attention to it and to its potential because we see like many brands right now like really rising um, very fast. And um, many, many creators are like finding themselves now creating content and um, switching from Instagram to TikTok and also like, um, yeah, we see many things also in social media happening right now, like um, Twitter got renamed into X and um, this all are things which are like driving the attention to these platforms. And I think to be very successful in educating the younger platforms, we should like definitely be early and adapt to it. Thank you, Anna. I think that's also a great point to understand that younger audience is seeking role models. And within the influencers, they're finding these people that they can relate to. And besides from social proof, you're also getting a little bit of role modeling happening. Alex, what do you think? Hi, all again. As I mentioned previously, I work with Lots Exchange, and this project allows users to swap crypto hassle-free. So, regarding the our all of our sorts, I agree with all panelists. And just to sum up, can explain what how we can bring more users to Web3 is only at two words: simple and useful. We can provide simple solutions, so a lot of people can understand how to use your solution and why they need to use your solution and useful, so they can solve their problems and use your solution every day. So this is the main idea, I think, and that is that it is we want and would provide users in a few years, I think, with all Web3 projects. I think Alex is put on here because there are so many alternatives in the space. People don't want to struggle anymore just so they can use your app. If it's not simple, if it's not useful, they're going to pick something else. Awesome. I have a question actually to Alexandro. You have invested in so many high impact projects in the past. Um, what was the one channel that you would recommend for targeting mass audiences and uh, younger generation from your experience? Yeah, you know, for the success of the project, first of all, there should be really great team behind, and you should look at it at, at, at first. And then um, you should uh, be creative to 
get to reach this younger audience, but the first audience uh, which you should reach is the uh, investor's audience. It's a bit different, and uh, mostly investors look at the team and how strong it is, like um, the, um, the guys who are designing the code. And um, first of all, before reaching the young audience with some kind of play to earn or memes, or any other things, uh, you should really be careful uh, before taking an investment uh, decision. <laughs> uh, it is uh, r really important. And um, speaking about getting a younger audience, you know, everyone uh, knows about uh, Dogecoin or Pepper, but uh, almost uh, no one heard about uh, Polygon Matrix throughout a uh, younger audience. As soon as you have uh, good marketing and uh, some funny content, then uh, this audience could be reached uh, easily. But uh, it's also uh, a problem in crypto space that uh, this creativity is used to scam people, and it's really disappointing. So wherever you see this uh, funny content, you should uh, check the, uh, what, what is behind of it. And um, yeah, it's, it's easy to get this young audience, but we should be careful helping uh, good projects to do that, but not these scams which are happening in crypto. Yeah, I would also add to that that you always have to do your own research before investing. And, uh, if I cannot, I, as part of the content, should always be educating around scams. You should educate your community all the time and show that you're credible and this is how you detect scams. Great that you touch on already on the point of community. I think it became such a buzzword at this point in Web3. If you wake up anyone in the audience and ask them, like, tell me one thing about crypto, they're like, community. So um, actually, there was an interesting research done that over 88% 80, 80, uh, 8 of people are going to invest in projects just because of word of mouth from their friends, from influencers, and so on. So if we're talking about younger people, if we're talking about uh, those who are not yet crypto natives, what do you think is the actual role of community for those who do not yet see it as a buzzword? Shall I start again? <laughs> Alex, why don't you start this time? Uh, OK, so I think, uh, yeah, crypto community is a huge audience. And each project would like to get as much people as they can. At, at they would like to promote their solutions through the community because um, it is a good way and it is a cheap way to promote their product. Therefore, I think the main idea to solve the gap between marketing team and the team of the project and with the community, to provide transparency, to be honest with your audience so they can understand what you do, why you do, and how you move in further. And why you decide to change your roadmap, for example, or strategy. If you have some issues with your project, you have to explain it to your community so they can understand why these gaps are raised and how you would like to uh, solve your issues. So that is the main idea, just to be in touch with your community every day. I think uh, here consistency really becomes the key because we've seen projects who are only broadcasting some info to their community and just hope that it's going to stick. But in reality, it really needs to be this two-way communication. So I think it's a great point. Anna, what do you think? Um, I think that community is really power, and I can bring an example for that. When you have like a mass of like mass of people, and when you splash water on them, then you will hit just like some people. But if the mass will splash the water back, then you will just drown into water. So um, this is a good example for showing like how powerful like a community can be, because. Um, like the things which like one person is not able to do by their own, um, they probably can solve together. So I think um, it's also important that we like um, interact with each other and also like help each other. So um, it's a lot about empathy also. And um, all in all, like Bitcoin, for example, as cryptocurrency, it's all about trust. So it's peer to peer trust. So. Um, I would even say before investing in a project, like I need to trust in the people. So that's why I could relate to the, uh, what you said earlier, that um, people would also just like jump into a project, project or invest because like hearing from it from mouth to mouth, because um, yeah, that's the main point, that's community. 
Awesome, Anna. Thank you so much. I think you're touching um, also on a great point of how community can be empowering the project. Um, we work with a lot of uh, those projects that are still early stage and they want to sell a token. And in order to do that, you don't just build a number of people. You really need to get engaged audience who are going to push the project, who are going to become your ambassadors. And younger people have more energy. They have uh, more time to spend on socials. So they are great uh, people to become your ambassadors as well. As, as soon as uh, Bitcoin or any other crypto are peer-to-peer -peer and uh, they are community-driven, of course, uh, community is the most important thing. And uh, yeah, I'd like to share my experience in uh, making uh, communities. Uh, we made uh, a nice, I would say nice, <laughs> uh, documentary film about history of Bitcoin. And in process of doing it, uh, we went to El Salvador and uh, I, I spoke with many uh, young uh, adopters of Bitcoin in this country. Like uh, people started to use crypto just because of this law and it was the first country in the world to adopt uh, Bitcoin as a legal tender and it became interesting to everyone to try, to try it out, to understand what it is. And um, yeah, there is a very active community in this uh, country. And we started to make this film and occasionally we found uh, so many uh, government authorities interested to speak with us. And uh, driven this energy, we already went to other countries and uh, we met uh, CZ, Justin Sun and uh, many other top crypto people. And through this film, uh, we not just gave uh, the value to crypto community, explaining basics uh, about crypto, how does it work, and uh, what is the history behind of Bitcoin creation. But we also made a good community of people who visit events together, we exchange uh, some interesting ma ma market, <laughs> market news and some insights from uh, crypto market. And it uh, makes value. It makes value for the community itself. It makes value for uh, the people outside who can also integrate in this community and uh, get access to high level crypto people and educate themselves. So it's like my own experience. Yes, um, if I can add something as a, as a closing for our communities, I mean, we started with content. So let's say top of the funnel is a content. In the content, you should um, communicate the values that the community will stand for, the decentralization and why it's important and ownership. So a uh, community will be tied on common values. And then with the influencers, you bring them in a chat group, on Discord, on Telegram, they engage a lot, and then you bring them to events. But you should know what your brand stands uh, for, what are your values, and the values of Web3 and decentralization, and why are we doing this, and communicate those values to bring the community together. That really resonates with me. I think one thing is knowing your values, and another thing is living your values. Back to the topic of scams, I think all of the projects said they had values, but then the reality is how do you embody those values in everything you do? Um, I'd love to transition to the topic of opening crypto to uh, mass audience. Considering where we are right now, Alex, with the growing awareness about the public in general, do you think we're there yet? Or should we still focus on kind of crypto natives? Uh, to be honest, I think uh, we still focus on crypto natives, right? Because uh, for now, it is a, not a good time to bring more users into crypto because a bear market, it is because a lot of scams now, because of a lot of hacks now this year as well. So they will see a lot of issues and a lot of difficulties in crypto markets. And for now, it is quite better to focus, uh, to develop your own project, to work on it, to improve it. And maybe when the market will go up, we will increase the rates. We can show our projects to mass, op mass audience and allow them to start using these projects and see if everything OK and goes further. Anyone in the audience disagrees? I disagree. <laughs> it is quite good. I need to disagree. I think it's always a good time to start creating content because it takes time. 
for people to be educated. So even if you are not selling right now to these uh, people, to the mass audiences, you need to start educating them um, in the ways that they will listen. And Gen Z in a different way, millennials in a different way. Uh, but yeah, it's important to start now with, with this content strategy on social media and this education. And when they are ready, they will come, they will buy, and they will be so sure about their decision because they're already been educated to follow the right influencers, and it takes time. It takes time, one, two years. So at the time when the market is ready, they will all be ready to buy and they will feel confident about it. Yeah, and there is another point. Uh, during the bull market, it will be too expensive to advertise yourself. During the bear market, you have uh, more opportunities to do it cheap. Yeah, it's also like a good point to start educating because then the people are getting prepared for the next bull run, which is like opening a lot of opportunities to the mass. I think to the point of actually acquiring some users, there is um, a dilemma between, oh, we don't have the money, it's bear market, to we're not going to have enough money to spend on all of our cost per acquisition because it's bull market. And it's never a good time to acquire users. Um, Paulina, you mentioned a very uh, interesting point on targeting millennials versus Gen Zs. From all the work that you do, what are some differences and similarities that you see? Yeah, I think I touched on, on some before. Like I said, with millennials, everything is a little bit more polished. They love lifestyle. They aspire to live this uh, Instagram lifestyle. Even if they don't talk about it subconsciously, they all want to be there, traveling, having the work-life balance. So you need to speak to their aspirations. But also millennials are more willing to get educated, to join a webinar, to get a course. They're really into getting educated now. So you educate on social media, you show them the lifestyle they aspire to, you communicate the values as well. Values are important to them. Uh, how your company is actually helping the world, helping the community, and then, um, through that content, you get them to a course, a webinar, and then they feel confident to buy and they have more spending power. Uh, on the other hand, Gen Z, they uh, feel that they don't need to buy courses. They get all their education. They feel that they can learn everything from YouTube. So if you start um, creating the content yourself as a business owner, I work with personal brands. So Elon Musk is, is a a personal brand, basically. That's why everything he tweets, um, he can affect the markets. So you can be the influencer in your niche. If you don't want to be the influencer, if you don't want to create the content, you're going to be dependent on the influencers that Gen Z follows to spread your message. You have to build the relationships with these influencers. But it's very important to have this content strategy, and you don't need to be overly polished. You can be more raw, more real, and be on the platforms where they are. And and I, I know TikTok is on the rise, but I, I believe in YouTube as a long-term strategy. They, can, they watch content for hours, and that content stays there. And they, it will come up on the search or on the recommendations for many years on YouTube. So um, yeah, th those are the differences and how to market to them. And again, it's very important to uh, speak to their values. Gen Z are more into inclusivity, into um, yes, um, creating a, a life that everyone is equal, everyone is inclusive, but also make it more fun for them, gamify and include them in the content, engage them. They create videos better than all of us here if we don't have any Gen Zs. Like they were born with the phone in their hand. So include them in the, in the content as well, engage them. For sure, I think all of these are great tips. Anna, can you add a few more to um, for the creative approaches and marketing Web3? So I'm strongly, I strongly believe that we are also moving like to a new generation of creating content. Um, the society is moving more and more like into a paid content creation. So um, like platforms are on the rise, like for example, um, OnlyFans or um, even other. Um, yeah, um, courses, webinars, or platforms where you like um, pay the creators for providing this educational content. And you see it also like with play to earn games, like people are crazy about rewards and 
um, this even like is pushing the um, generation even more to get into it and um, to do, uh, like to explore like even NFT games or like we saw this happening with XC Infinity. Like it's it's bringing big opportunities to like people which are maybe not so lucky to live in a country where they're like very um, able to get financial freedom. So these are all um, ways to um, yeah build a strong community again back to this topic and um, yeah, to earn and be a part of this movement. Thank you so much, Anna, and I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. I'd love to extend great thanks to my panelists, Alex, Anna, Alexandra, and Paulina. I think um, we all gathered amazing insights on the importance of community, values, uh, marketing, the insights about the bear market versus bull market uh, acquisition, and all the other things you can use to open up your project to get more mass audience and younger generations on board. We thank you for your attention and we'll catch you in the audience.